standing up in McKinney. This is According to Callus, and we are back today. We're going to talk about what liberty, what can you do with it? Before we get into that, let me remind you, this is episode 490 coming to you on the 7th of September, 2023. And yes, we are waiting to see what unfolds down in Austin as we have our political trial going on down there. For those of you unaware, that's right. The attorney general is about to be sacked, or at least they're attempting to sack the attorney general, courtesy of none other than our very own governor and his friend, the speaker of the house. Funny how uh, strange bedfellows run our state when we are supposed to be a nice conservative Republican state, when in fact, it doesn't appear that's the case, now does it? All right, before we get into the topic du jour today, talking about liberty, let me remind you the best way that you can help me help you is like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. And if you're feeling particularly motivated, you can rate and review this podcast. You can join me over in the social media world. That's right. I have a page and a group on Facebook. I hang out on occasion over at Gab and MeWe and you know what? I'll even occasionally throw something up on Instagram. Again, my name is Stephen Callis. I live in McKinney, Texas, and I care about what happens here as well as Callan County, as well as Texas. And I labor on the belief that one man can still make a difference. That is what we do here every day, every show. We try and make a difference. There's a certain amount of urgency when talking about liberty. I had a brief exchange uh, over the last couple of days, actually two of them. One basically indicated that I'm not doing enough. (laughs) I'm not trying to convince people that have given up. I mean, that's the interpretation of events, and I'm not meaning to besmirch the person. I I can only imagine that uh, they were supposed to be tweaking me. I can only imagine that, uh, you know, was trying to draw out a, com- a longer conversation. I, I, I have respect for people that just say, you know what, I've done all that I can do, and I'm done. I respect that. It's frustrating. It's disappointing. I, I kind of feel like that burden shifts on to those of us that are still carrying on. But you know what? If you put in 10 or 20 years and you got nothing left, you know, it's perfectly respectable to leave the battlefield. My only hope is, is that you would have trained up your replacement. You'd brought in reinforcements before you vacate. That doesn't always happen. It's not always practical either. The other conversation had to do with the fact that, well, I don't believe any liberty advocate would ever support secession. Well, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, I both, well, let me rephrase this. I strongly support people having the decision, the choice. Me personally, I think Texas might very well be better off as an independent nation. I put my money where my mouth is in the fact that I support T&M and I also hmm, talk about it quite often here on this show. And I realize that it might be hurting me in growing the show and that's okay. But first and foremost, I want for popular sovereignty to be determined by we the people. Look, have the vote. If we lose, we lose. We move on. We go on and with our lives. We find some other way to protect Liberty, to grow liberty. But until that happens, I think it's a very valid and logical move. Demand that we get a vote. Demand that we talk about why Texas is better off as an independent nation. You can disagree. And quite frankly, based upon the way our state government's being run, there is an argument that we'd be trading off the tyrants in D.C. for tyrants in Austin. I mean, that's a very valid point, but we have to consider which do we have a better chance of controlling and reigning in 
Which is the closest one that we can potentially end their tyranny, their despotism? I think we have zero chance, zero chance in D.C. We have a small chance in Austin. So when we talk about liberty, you know, one of the one of the major issues for most people, myself included, is gun ownership, right? It, it's a hair trigger, <laughs> metaphorically speaking, right? You come after guns, then you immediately are a suspect. We don't trust you. Just like you've trained trained up the people with badges to uh, fear everybody that carries a firearm, we fear everybody that wants to take away firearms. It's a two-edged sword, right? You either trust the populace, you, you trust the general population that you ostensibly work for to be armed and peaceful, or you don't. And if you don't trust the general population to be armed and peaceful, then I would suggest to you, perhaps you'd be happier in New Jersey. Maybe Chicago. Portland? I don't know, but you're not a Texian. It's as simple as that. If you if you fear people being armed, you're the problem. And when we talk about liberty, you know, I I read a number of uh, articles, a couple of novels that speculated that one of the reasons why the pro-life issue was allowed to drag on for so long is it, it split us in the liberty movement, right? It, it caused us to fight amongst ourselves more than fighting against the tyrannical overlords. And maybe there's some truth to that. But if you're not willing to understand that an individual's life is worth more than your inconvenience, then you're not really worried about liberty. You're just not. You can give me any claim you want. You you can disregard the creator God. You can disregard the independent baby within your womb. But But if you're not willing to understand that baby's life is more valuable than inconvenience. And this goes for men and women. Your inconvenience was brought about by you creating a child. If you're not willing to accept that and understand that, then the problem's with you. You're not a liberty advocate. Likewise, if you're going to stand there and tell me that people shouldn't be able to determine what their form of government is. People shouldn't be able to determine whether or not they've had enough government. People shouldn't be able to determine whether or not they want to go their own way. People shouldn't be able to determine whether or not they want to reform or reformat the type of government we have for better or worse. Then I doubt you're a liberty advocate. And this gets kind of dicey because, you know, I have friends, acquaintances, allies on both sides of this equation when it comes to, oop, accidentally hit a button there. <laughs> when it comes to convention of states, I, I myself, not a fan. I, I'm really concerned about opening up the Pandora's box, which is rewriting the Constitution. Yeah, yeah, I know they say they can put limits on it. Yeah, I, I know that uh, that has to be ratified by three quarters of the states, but that doesn't make me feel real good because there's not a ratification process in and they could change the amount of states. And quite frankly, we might just have a secretary of state deem it passed. I mean, you got to be really, really careful when you're going down this road. But on the flip side, I'm not going to continue to work against these guys. I, I understand where they're coming from. I want to believe most of them have their hearts in the right place. And I'm a liberty advocate. And it, it's well within the constitutional framework to amend the Constitution in several ways. Why would I want to prevent them from doing it other than it's Pandora's box? I, I have to be held to my own principles, right? Now, I tell them, I try and convince them, hey, you know what? If you do this, there's, there's no way to prevent the outcome. You're, you're, there's no guarantees here. They dismiss most of those concerns respectfully. And and again, I trust a lot of these guys. I like a lot of these guys. I believe that they believe they're doing the right thing. I have my doubts. 
But as an advocate for liberty, I have to also realize they have a right to do that. And I shouldn't be impeding them. Even if I disagree with them, I shouldn't be the cause of the problem. They need me if, God forbid, they're successful. They need me on their team. I'm going to be a staunch advocate for (laughs) the things they want and the things they don't want. The things that we both don't want, quite frankly. But again, if you're if you're an advocate for liberty, you have to be able to defend what's left of our liberty, which grows perilous every day, and you have to be willing to advocate for more liberty. The sad fact is there's a whole lot of people out there that will gladly put something over their faces again, gladly take part in another uh, experiment, and gladly shut themselves in their homes again. Because, you know, well, we'll just print more money. I'm here to tell you, I don't think that's going to happen the way you think it's going to happen. I I don't think that's going to have a positive outcome. But you know what? You have every right to do that. And while I might mock you behind your back, if you're going to wander around in your car by yourself covering your face, um, yeah, yeah, I might do that. But I'm not going to be rude. I'm not, I'm not going to treat you poorly. I'm not going to chase you out of stores. I, I'm not going to refuse to give you service. No, we don't do that. We advocate for liberty. I watched a video the other day uh, where there was a guy that was a non-Trump supporter that was a black guy. And there was going through the whole crowd of a Trump rally, which apparently, in his words, was all white. And they said, well, maybe there might be three brothers over there. But... He was treated fairly nicely. People waved at him and honked and were generally pleasant. And he was shocked. Okay. Not sure why, but okay. For the same reason, we as liberty advocates, we have to be nice. We have to engage. We have to encourage people that liberty is a good thing. If we don't do that, we sow the seeds of our own destruction. But we also have to... We have to hold the line. We can't let them continue to take things away. While while we rightfully denote that you can't come for our firearms, they just make it more difficult for you to carry them. They just make it more difficult for you to buy ammunition. They make it more difficult for you to train. And quite frankly, they're fattening us up and dumbing us down so that even though we have the firearm, we don't know how to use it or what to do with it when we have it. And we have no motivation and we're not willing to expel the effort in order to do anything about it. That that was honestly the the vibe I was picking up with one of the guys that was communicating with me online. It's like, yeah, okay, fine, you have this stuff, but what are you going to do about it? <laughs> There's nobody out there that seems the like, least bit interested. And he's not wrong. It is concerning. When, when you can't even define what liberty is, and that's a large part of our population, when you're not willing to... I don't know, speak forward and and get a slightly aggressive when they come to shut down things, when they come to take away more liberty. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to be looking at. Indeed, there's a certain percentage of our population that is quite content to parade around and promote perversity and call that liberty. Meanwhile, if you want to just pray unmolested, literally and figuratively, in a public space, they feel the need to attack you. It's backwards. I've heard, and I, I, I have to go back and look, but I've heard that even SCOTUS basically shut down or shot down more expansion of individual religious liberty. Now look, I'm not willing to panic. I'm not willing to claim the sky is falling. And regardless if the Lord's coming back tomorrow or six years from now, I still think we ought to be doing the same things. We we ought to be standing for what's right. We ought to be protecting those that can't protect themselves. We need to be present and stand for liberty and protect those that need our help. That means we have to give up a little bit of our own personal time, perhaps. That means maybe we have to give up a little of our personal property sometimes. That means maybe we have to be slightly inconvenienced at some times. But again, 
What's at stake here is the future. What's at stake here is liberty for all. What's at stake here is an opportunity to do the right thing without being forced to do anything. You know, in in church, they talk about sacrificial giving, right? And I mean, Tom Woods routinely talks about, hey, uh, we as libertarians, this is Tom speaking, not me. We as libertarians talk about if we had a free society, we would look out for our own. We would take care of our own. Perhaps we need to actually show this and do it. Perhaps you need to give a little money to this guy or that guy. Uh, One of the guys he mentions this with is when he has Scott Horton on. And he says, look, I give my money to support this guy and what he's doing. And if, if you are a libertarian, you ought to be doing the same thing. If you believe in liberty, you ought to be doing the same thing. I think that's a fair call. Likewise, when you show up at church, if you're not supporting your church, and there's more than one way to support your church. You don't just have to throw your alms at them. You, you can give your time. You can give your energies. You can give your skills. You can give money, yes. You can promote it. You can do a number of different things. But at the end of the day, it's where is your heart at? What are you giving up in order to do that? And realistically, churches are supposed to be looking out for the least of these. Some do. Some do it more than others. And some, well, sadly, no. But not all churches are the same. Not all bodies are the same. It's really hard to get upset when somebody does something slightly different to you, especially if you respect liberty. If you're going to respect liberty and a church says, hey, you know what? Uh, we love you all, but that whole uh, perversion stuff, yeah, we're we're not okay with that. We're not going to celebrate that here. And yeah, uh, our church, we believe all black lives matter, even the unborn. And, and we particularly celebrate couples that get married, stay together and have children. I mean, the these are all things that should be obvious. They shouldn't need to be said, but in today's day and age, if you do, you might be attacked by a mob. Today's day and age, we bend over backwards to not offend the people that show up at the churches. When I seem to remember, that's not exactly how Jesus played it when he was on earth. And I'm fairly certain Paul and Peter and James and John were much the same way. They said, you need to repent, quit doing this stuff. You need to focus on doing the right thing. Now you have the liberty to continue to do this. We're not going to force you. We're not going to use the law or the government to make you do this. But you know what? This is not the way you get to heaven. We're going to encourage you to do the right thing. We're going to lead by example. We're going to tell you this is what the Lord God says, but we're not going to use the arms government to make you do it. In today's day and age, I suspect that one of the major faults that we did is early on, we went to government and asked them to say, well, hey, you know, these are these biblical precepts. We think these are good. We want to mandate them by law. And while that was maybe useful or maybe helpful as things eroded and then the state thought, well, we can change this. We can upend morality. We can redefine what's men and women. We can redefine marriage. We can redefine pornography. We can redefine sodomy. We can redefine all these different things. We can upend the entirety of morality simply by a few court cases. And we, the church, sat by and did nothing. To me, it was... If I wouldn't have watched the news when I went to church, I would have never, ever known that Roe versus Wade was finally put on the scrap heap of history. That the Supreme Court, right? Well, no, I'm going to say it this way. The Supreme Court finally did the right thing. They said, look, this is not a federal matter. This is something we handled within the states. And while we might think this is an odious matter, doing away with children that are in the womb, the states have the rights to do what they deem is appropriate here. Unfortunately, you know, the pro-life team (laughs) missed it. They didn't take action and they went to immediate overreach. The culture has degraded to such a point that inconvenience is more important than unborn children. And they, and they failed to notice that they've been harping at getting a change from the law the entire time, which was the right thing to do. 
but they didn't deal with the culture. They didn't deal with the underlying issues. When you don't value life, it doesn't matter what the state says. Up until 1974, 72, I don't know, who, whenever Roe was decided, when, when they decided that unborn lives had no value, right? The culture still valued life, but there was a whole lot of people that wanted to take advantage of that. And then over the preceding 50 years, the culture as a whole decided that they didn't value life. And they, ex- <laughs> they began to consider it a very profane thing for men and women to get married and have children and have families and stick together. And that coupled with several other things that we were celebrating as liberation, that we were celebrating as progress, have in fact degraded and ruined family and culture. So while liberty is important, there are still responsibilities. You can have your freedom, but freedom without responsibility is chaos. Nobody's suggesting that I ought to be able to walk down the street and, you know, tag all the fences or that I should be able to go take my car and run down the wrong side of the road. Nobody thinks that's a good idea, but I mean, that's freedom, right? No, 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 no. You've, you've abdicated any responsibility. You fail to realize that there's other people. You fail to realize there's something called private property. You fail to realize that your bad behavior puts yourself and other people at risk. That's not what we're supposed to be supportive of. That's not what liberty is. And if we can't define what liberty is, and if we, if we can't recognize the value that it has, we certainly can't stand up for it. And we certainly, if we're not willing to stand up for it, we're not going to be able to take it back. When, you, when you've got a bunch of people that are content to sit at home watching TV at night, don't never... Or, don't and never want to go out and do anything or or they're content to play video games for hours on end or they're content to do other things that honestly are a giant suck of waste of time when you've emasculated men before they can even grow up to become men when you've uniformly dismissed the value of life you're not going to be up to the task of defending liberty. You don't even recognize what it is because it was never really there for you. So I'm here to tell you all options are on the table. We must do everything and anything we can. That means we need to go wake up the churches. That means if your church isn't willing to stand and do the right thing, if they're not willing to, well, at the very least, repent for shutting down, when we're supposed to be doing our weekly worship services, repent for leading people astray by giving into the fear and the panic other than trusting the Lord. If they're not willing to say, we are glad that Roe, the nationwide celebration of murder in the womb is ended. Now we need to look and see how can we help those women that have legitimate concerns? How can we deal with the babies that were born as a result of this? And what can we do to help them? If they're not willing to do that, you know, wake them up. Now I don't, again, and, and I, and I feel like I need to remind people, I don't want my church or my pastor ever getting up at the pulpit and saying, you need to go vote for candidate X because I said so. That's not what I want. I want them to speak on issues. I want them to speak on biblical concerns. I want them to educate their flock. This is what the Bible says about these things. You can take your own time and energies to find out which one of these candidates best align with what we believe. It's not that hard. And among them should be individual liberty to worship individual liberty to take time out and Show your appreciation for the Almighty. Hmm? You know, we have a First Amendment for a reason because the federal government wasn't supposed to dictate terms on who and what and how 
you can celebrate the Lord God. In other words, who leads your worship, how you do your worship, where you do your worship. That wasn't supposed to be dictated to by the federal government. Interestingly enough, the several states had their own state churches, which I'm not super excited about that, but at, but at least they recognized that that was beyond their authority. But let me ask you, do you think an absence of morality, an absence of biblical teaching is a net positive? I don't. No, if you if you reject Christianity, I get it. Maybe you find it as an affront. But here's the thing. The basic teachings of Christianity has never advocated using government to mandate what the Lord commands. Other than a few basic things, right? Yeah, you're not supposed to go kill other people. You're not supposed to lie about people. You're not supposed to steal people's stuff. Those are civil laws. Now, we would like for you to not be profane. We would like for you to not blaspheme the Lord. We would like for you to show honor and respect. Certainly. I've heard people refer to it as the two tablets, right? I get it. I don't know that our culture is ready for that. I don't know that Texas is ready for that. Even though, you know, we're the buckle of the Bible belt here in Dallas. Are we? <laughs> Look, I've always been honest. I don't believe the solutions in the Republican Party. I know part of the problem is in the Democrat Party. But really and truly, I think the problem is humanity. The problem is the fallen nature of man. You can't fix everything all the time, and you certainly can't do it with the law. Can you mitigate things? Sure. But apart from Christ, it's never going to be right. It's, it's never going to see fulfillment. That's just my opinion. You feel free to disagree with me. Feel free to get angry. But that's my opinion. And after all, this is my show and this show is based upon my opinion and my understanding of the facts. So, yeah, yeah, I'm going to defend your liberty. I'm going to, I'm going to defend your ability to reject God. I'm going to defend your ability to be a jerk. But on the flip side, I'm going to also defend my ability to do the things that I believe are right. I'm going to defend my ability to worship in the way I deem best. And when I say I, I mean the way I'm commanded, by the way. But apart from all of that, if you're not going to exercise those rights that were laid out in the Bill of Rights, if you're not going to exercise the rights that aren't even numbered, through the ninth and 10th amendments, then they're going to go away. If we don't train up the next generation to understand what they have and what the value of it is, it's going to cease to exist. And I'm here to tell you, it's already very, very close as it is, which is kind of the point of where I started out at. We're hanging by threads. It's our responsibility to make that change right here, right now. We need it to Educate the people what liberty is, why it's important, and what can you do to preserve it and take it back. And you have to be willing to do the work to take it back. And no, I'm not talking about doing anything with firearms. That is merely a tool that is the last thing that we should hopefully ever have to do. Nobody wants that. You don't want that. You don't want civil war. You don't want to go down that road. But if all else fails, that's what you got. And with that, this has been According to Callus. And uh, yeah, got to remember, what is liberty and what does it mean and what is it worth? And we'll talk some more about this tomorrow. Until then, I will see you on the other side.